Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to do some more calorimetry, but a slightly different kind. This time we're going to talk about food calorimetry, and that is where you're using a calorimeter to determine the number of calories in a specific food. So remember that a calorimeter is this insulated device that we use to measure the absorption or release of heat in chemical or physical processes. And a calorimeter may be simple, such as a soda can, or complex, like a bomb calorimeter. And in this particular lab, uh, we use a soda can. And this isn't really a lab, it's a simulation of a lab. So when we're solving for heat changes, we might use a very complicated bomb calorimeter, like this one that we've talked about previously. Or in this case, we're going to use something really pretty rudimentary. And in this case, you'll see I've got a ring stand. I've got a little aluminum pan um, with, in this case, uh, we're going to simulate what would happen if we uh, lit a corn chip on fire underneath a soda can. So you'll see there's a ring, um, an iron ring, and we've got a soda can sitting on top of it, and then I have a thermometer, so what we typically do is we put water inside the soda can, we measure how much water, we measure the temperature of the water at the start, we burn a food like a corn chip, we let the, um, the food uh, burn completely, we monitor the change in the temperature, and we make calculations from there. So, um, Generally, food calorimetry is used to determine how much energy is stored or contained in different kinds of food. And the burning of a food sample releases energy in the form of light and heat. And so what we do is we can use water to measure the amount of heat that was released by the food by figuring out what happened to the water. And typically, spoiler alert, the temperature of the water will go up. So when we're solving for heat changes, and as I said, this particular setup is for a corn chip. Um, in lab, we usually do corn chips, popcorn, um, we'll do potato chips, we'll do um, crackers, whatever we can have um, on hand. And again, we burn the food under a soda can that has a measured amount of water in it, and we monitor the temperature. So let's do an example. Let's say we had a potato chip with a mass of 11.5 grams, placed it in that aluminum dish under the soda can, and let's put 50 grams of water into the soda can, and we measure it at 22 degrees C. So the chip was lit on fire with a match and allowed to burn until the flame went out. The water in the soda can reached a temperature of 92 degrees C. The final mass of the burn chip was 2.5 grams. So what we did was we took the chip before we burned it, and then we massed it after we burned it. So now the first thing we'll do is talk about the heat that was gained by the water. And we'd use the equation Q equals M times C times delta T, where in this case the Q for the water that we're calculating is the heat in calories that was gained by the water. The M for the water is the mass of the water. The C for the water is its specific heat, and we know that water has a specific heat of one calorie per gram degree C. And the delta T for the water is the T2 minus T1, or T final minus T initial. So calculating the heat gained by the water, our initial temperature was 22 degrees, our final temperature was 92. That means the delta T was 70.0. Rules for sig figs, when you're subtracting, um, you pick the number with the fewest digits to the right of the decimal. In this case, that was the tenths place. So that would be appropriate right there. The mass, I said, was 50 grams of water. And the specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram degree C. So now we're solving for Q, which is M times C times delta T. So here our Q is our M, which was 50 grams, our C, which is 1 calorie per gram degree C, and our delta T was 70 degrees C. Grams is going to cancel out. 
degree C is going to cancel out, and that leaves us with our Q that comes out to 3,500 calories. Now, if we wanted to convert to food calories, that would be 35 kilocalories, because a food calorie is a kilocalorie. So the heat that was gained by the water from burning the food underneath it was 3,500 calories, and we're going to keep with regular calories. So now we can figure out what the heat was that was contained in the chip. So the heat that was gained by the water is the same heat that was lost or released by our chip. So for the chip, we had the Q that it released when it burned was 3,500 calories. The initial mass was 11.5 grams. The final mass was 2.5 grams. That means our change in mass was 11.5 minus 2.5, which is 9 grams. So now we're going to calculate. The heat in the chip is usually calculated by calories per gram. So we've got the calories and we have the mass that we burned. So the heat in the chip in this case was 3,500 calories. We calculated that using water divided by 9 grams. That was the mass that actually burned. And that comes out to 388.8 .8 calories per gram. And then if we look over here, this number, the Q, had two significant digits. The uh, change in mass also had two significant digits. So we're going to round to two sig figs. So that means that the heat in the chip came out to 390 calories per gram, 3,500 divided by 9, rounded to two sig figs, comes out to 390 calories per gram. So what we did here was we calculated, using what happened to water, we calculated how much energy in calories per gram was released by a chip that was burned. And again, this is when you look at your food labels, when you buy food, it always gives you the number of calories for a serving. And the serving is based on how many calories there are in a gram. So they figure what a serving size is in grams. They use this calculation for calories per gram, and that's how they calculate what is being delivered by a specific sample of food. So I hope this helped. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.